What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Let's get into this. As some of you probably realized, I took a little bit of time off here. It was like nine days since I posted my last video. I'm trying to stay really consistent with these uploads. So if you're new here, thank you for tuning in. My name's Kalen. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay posted as I post these videos. I'm sharing little bits of my life and this is a, a journey of creating a project that I've always wanted to since I was really young. YouTube has always been something I've been really motivated about. Try to do gaming channels um, and little like life shorts from being young. Like literally when I was 12 years old, I was posting YouTube videos and stuff and trying to do content, but I never was consistent when I was young. Um, so now that I'm older, it's something that I'm a lot more passionate about and I want to take you guys along for my journey and hopefully inspire one person to sort of pick up and do something similar if it's something that interests you, uh, whether it's YouTube, business, painting, screen printing. I cover a lot of different things on this channel. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in and let's get into this video. Today's video is probably going to be another one on screen printing. I burnt a new screen, so we're going to be trying to do some printing and going over some of the growing pains of what I've been learning and sort of the process of starting a clothing brand and some of the hiccups I've been having and sort of what I've been getting stuck on. So let's get right into this video and do some printing. I tried to record the process on building this machine, but it was literally a three and a half hour clip and my phone died, so I lost the whole recording. But I have this little screen printing machine built now. So this holds the screens and sort of lines everything up for me. So I've been able to do some better measurements and stuff so far. And then I also have this little laser that is to like level everything and make sure it's all square every single time. So these have been helping me a lot from just putting in a cutting board and doing it on the floor. You can do it either way, but this one's a little more useful for like multi-layered colorful designs. This machine was really inexpensive too. Um, some are thousands of dollars. So this one was only a couple hundred dollars as it is like a super, super beginner one, but it is a uh, little investment to learn for myself. So with this machine, I've done a couple different prints and I've made a couple different screens. I also got some new, new screens. Still learning to do the screens and like lighting and placement and everything. This screen was a fail, still a learning process, but uh, it is slowly getting better. So I've ruined all of my personal t-shirts at this point, but this is what I have made. So this one is just an all over the back print um, with the screen that I messed up sort of cool idea that I want to try and bring to life. Uh, so yeah, just all over the shoulders. I still got some room to work with on the front of this t-shirt as I didn't do anything with that yet. But yeah, all over the back on that one. This one was an old shirt that I sort of customized a long time ago. It used to just be a white shirt and then it sort of got stained from just like sweat and life. So I dyed it purple um, and this is actually another all over the print back there as you guys can sort of see this one turned out a little worse than that one um, letters are a little clearer but some of them turned out which i'm happy about and i can sort of see the idea i'm trying to bring to life like this s is pretty crispy here so like if i can get to that level i'll be really happy with with this production but i mean obviously like this section here needs to still be further worked on, but this guy is actually a super old bape shirt I had. A real bape shirt too. Um, see the little gold tag there, everything. So yeah, I mean, wreck the old bape shirt, but sort of cool to have that one as a prototype. Always growing pains with projects like these, and that's now my personal one of one, so I'm happy with it. Um, another cool one, just threw this one on the back, a little tester. I was layering some colors, so 
did the white with the blue over it. Again, nothing on the front for this one, just a little on the back so I can still hopefully wear this t-shirt. This one's a little cooler. I've already worn this one a lot. Um, it was a gray t-shirt that I threw some bleach on. So we have the bleach pattern dyes all over it. And then I threw the print on the front here. Again, nothing on the back. This one's the front print. Pretty happy with how this one turned out. Um, it's lined up pretty well. The print's pretty crispy. There is some like uh, distressing in the print that wasn't actually there in my screen. That's just how it printed. So still learning on that one, um, but I was pretty happy with how that one turned out. This one I was originally sort of happy with, and then I threw it on and I realized I really messed up on the alignment. That's when I ordered the laser. This one's super crooked on the front here. And then on the back, I nailed it. It's a little more lined up. Really nice black popping with the white. But again, the screen sort of just bled through. And then this was my first t-shirt I started working on. This one is sort of just the messy t-shirt with everything on it. This one, I think at some point, I'm either going to get a print I'm really happy with or I'm going to dye it, but I'm going to keep this shirt forever and this is going to be like a cool mixed media, crazy style shirt. Threw some of these ones on there. This one I've already washed once when I printed these and I'm still learning how to cure these properly. So these ones weren't cured when I washed it. I literally printed them and washed it to see how it would react. So I mean, they still are there, but they're not as bold as I'd like. I need to go through and rewash these and see how they cure now. But yeah, those are the prototypes so far. Let me know if you guys mess with any of these. We have a lot of more work to do here. These are not complete by any means, um, but we're gonna do some more printing today and see what we could cook up. So now I'm going to go through and set up everything to do some fresh prints for you guys and we'll go through and sort of run through the steps on what I'm doing here, how to do it, and how you guys can set this up at home. So the first step, of course, we're taking our t-shirt and we're laying it out on this little press board on the machine that this came with. If you don't have this machine yet, you can literally just lay it out on the floor. I suggest putting um, a solid piece of wood or like a wood cutting board in the area that you want to print. Make sure everything's aligned and you're happy with it. And placement is very important. So take your time, make sure you're working on a hard, stable surface and also that your cutting board is large enough for your printing area so you have something to sturdy your piece. Alright, and now that we have the shirt on, we're going to start working with the screen and our measurements. So we want to measure out the size of our logo, make sure that we have our measurements somewhere um, on the tape. I make these little indentation marks so I know where I'm printing to make sure it's centered the best I can. 
So whether you're using a ruler or you're just eyeballing it because you don't have the machine yet, I highly recommend making sure that you're sort of working with the neck tag line and the center of your design. That's what I go for for reference so far. The neck tag is always usually the center of your garment. Sometimes they do sew it in a little off center, so you really want to take your time and check over your work. Um, but yeah, so make sure everything's centered up. Get your shirt on there, get your screen ready. I've taped off all of the extra borders around my screen too, so it's purely just the logo showing now. And that's that step, so we'll get on to the next one here. Using the screen printing press machine, now that I have everything taped off and set up, I'm going to go ahead and tighten my screen in and double check my measurements and make sure everything's lined up and I'm happy with it because if I do a print and I lift up my screen to do another color or take a, a mid break or something, I want it to be lined up so it lays down in the exact same spot the second time. Otherwise, it's not going to be lined up and it's not going to look exactly how I want it. So you can see here, I'm lifting the press up and down and making sure it's sort of landing in the same spot as where my Sharpie marks are. Um, this is a very important thing. If you're doing it by hand, those Sharpie marks are going to be even more important because you really want to make sure you're setting the screen down on the exact same spot every single time. Otherwise, your lines aren't going to line up and it's really tricky. If you're trying to do a multiple colored screen print design without one of these machines, it's nearly impossible just for the sake of trying to line it up exactly the same, especially if you're not using your garment on one of these style of boards. It's very easy to have the fabric stretched out differently every time and then you'll never get the same print. And now that I'm happy with all that work, I'm going to go ahead and pull out all my little tools here, get the ink ready, my little squeegee ready, and we'll go ahead and we'll start doing some printing. First step, we're going to flood the screen with some ink and get everything prepped up here for the print. So let's get right into that. we got to throw on some gloves to make sure that we don't cross-contaminate everything with ink. Um, this stuff is very messy, so you always want to try and keep a clean work area when you're working with it.
So for this print, I am using a water-based ink, not a plastisol ink. Um, I'm still sort of learning the difference between inks, but from my understanding so far, it can be preference-based and quality-based. It all really depends on the project, the size of the print. Right now, I'm really enjoying using fabric dye as it blends into the garments really, really well. Um, and it's really easy to work with. You need a more inexpensive setup as you don't need big dryers to cure your design. It can air dry, you can use a heat dryer, or hair dryer, and multiple different um, ways to begin for more inexpensive methods. And then as you begin to build your business, you can get into those more expensive plastisol designs and DTF designs or DTG, I forget what the direct garment, yeah, DTG. Um, so those more expensive designs are definitely one that I want to get to here in the future, but right now I'm working on designing these prototypes myself and printing them myself just to sort of get an idea for what I'm trying to create here without putting a lot of money into making these prototypes and mock-up designs. It's really fun for me to be able to create these myself as I'm a really creative person and I really enjoy bringing projects to life. So to be able to take one of my old t-shirts and throw a fun little niche cool design that I mess with on it is something that I'm really, really enjoying lately. All right, but after a failed squeegee toss, let's get into this. So we're gonna flood our screen and do our first pass here. So pressure and angle is a very, very important thing when you're doing passes with screen printing. You wanna make sure you're at about a, I believe it's a 45 degree angle with substantial pressure, not enough that you're dragging on the mat per se, and if you can mentally envision it, um, how I like to think about it is when you're pushing your paint through your screen, it is essentially a piece of paper with some thumbtack holes in it. And if you push too hard, the paint is going to take the pressure of your hand and it is going to push against the screen and the garment and it is going to create a smudge. So you want to be right in between excessive pressure and too little of pressure just to the point where it's passing through the screen and it's laying on your garment but it's not pressing on your garment and smudging because you're pushing so hard. That's one thing that I've done a lot so far. Too much pressure results in a messy print so you know, one thing that I'm still learning and is a very big feat in this sort of hobby is learning how to use your hand pressures with these squeegees. There's different squeegees with different densities too so those can help. Right now I just have the ones that came with my kit so I haven't learned too much about the different density of the squeegees yet but pressure is tricky and with squeegeeing some people like to pull, some people like to push. Um, I'm still sort of refining my technique so I'm mainly doing pulling as I can find more control but I do do a couple pushes here and there just to sort of see how it works out. Then again, I'm not selling any of these designs yet. I'm purely just making these on my personal t-shirts to practice and see how they turn out and I've really been enjoying it so far.
All right, and now that I've probably done way too many passes with the squeegee, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean everything up, reduce, reuse, recycle. This ink goes a very, very long way. When you're laying it on your screen to begin printing, you wanna use way too much ink. You wanna have excess ink. You wanna make sure that that thing is loaded. So when you're done with your print, it's very important to clean up and reuse what you can. So most of these screen printing kits come with all these cool little tools. You get these squeegees, these scrubber brushes. I actually went to the dollar store and I got some rubber made like kitchen utensil spatulas and those are the best purchases I've ever made for this because if you know how those rubber spatulas work, when you're baking a cake they can scratch absolutely everything off. I've seen people using little metal paint mixers um, for this application so far, but I haven't actually seen anyone using these rubber little spatulas. In my background in life, I've worked in kitchens my entire life, so as soon as I started this project, that was immediately what I knew I needed. I needed one of these little rubber spatulas so I could save all the extra ink. So if you guys aren't already using those, that's a little secret tip. Hopefully I put you on to the, the little rubber made spatulas. It's super useful. All right, and now we are gonna go ahead and lift up the screen and see what we did, if it's a mess or if it turned out nice. And that's pretty crispy for how many passes I did and the ample pressure I was using. I am pretty satisfied with that. This is one of my designs that I'm working on. Um, he has a whole story behind him. There's a name to the design. There's a, there's a lot more going into it than just the little floating head design. So this is a little sneak peek on it. And now we gotta go through and clean up the screens and get everything complete and dry this guy up. So we're gonna go wash our screens and then we're gonna grab the hair dryer and dry the print. The really nice part about using water-based inks is it cleans off really easy. You don't need any chemicals necessarily for it. I probably should be wearing gloves while I'm doing this, um, but so be it. And yeah, so with the water-based ink, you literally just use some warm water. You can rinse everything off, dry it off. It all comes clean really easy. So if you're doing this at home, you can do it in your kitchen sink, you can do it outside, you can do it in your laundry room sink. It's a super easy project, the maintenance isn't that bad, as long as you're using water-based inks. I've seen plastisol inks require a lot more cleaning and maintenance for your screen, so I am. that's another reason that I'm sort of using the water-based inks and I'm happy with what I'm using right now, at least while I'm learning on it, and I can get my understanding before I go and start doing like 
puff inks and plastisol inks because I really do want to get to those as well. It just takes a lot more space and learning and skill and I've only been screen printing for probably two weeks now so I'm still really new to this and learning all of the tips and tricks and I need to get some new emulsion so I can hopefully get thicker emulsion on my screens because I'm pretty sure the Speedball brand emulsion I've been using isn't the best and it washes away very easy so I want to try some new brands and see if uh, one of the other brands is possibly better because I've been seeing on YouTube that emulsion and heat and all of these little tips and tricks they really work into how your screen turns out and then how your print turns out. So all these little things, they're really, really important to learn. But yeah, now that we got our screen cleaned up, we're going to go through and dry it. As you can see here, I'm literally just using a hair dryer and trying to heat the garment up. Um, roughly, if I had to try and put a number on it, you want it to heat up to about 150 to 200 degrees. And then that will fully, fully cure your print. So when you go to wash your print, then it won't fade. Um, as you can see, I'm using a water-based ink, so this goes right into the fabric. Essentially, it's dyeing the fabric, so it's not going to stretch, it's not going to crack. Once it's cured, it's not going to fade. If you don't cure it and you wash it, it will fade. It will still be there, but it'll fade. Um, my very first prints, I printed them, and then I washed them to cure them to see what it would look like, and they faded pretty nastily. All right, but now that we got the back all done up, we're gonna go through and we're gonna throw a print on the front here. So come along and let's cook this up. So for the front, we're going to tape off the head and just use the letters here. All right, and now that we've got that all done, we're gonna go through, make sure our measurement is there again, and then we are gonna go through, throw some gloves on, and lay down some ink, flood the screen, and repeat the process. So with this spread, I'm going to spread the ink a little differently. As you can see, I'm going to throw a little bit up on the side here. And then I'm going to come through and I'm going to spread it all along the bottom as I'm going to squeegee this a little differently. I'm going to do one across and then I'm going to probably do two or three passes um, top to bottom.
All right, and let's hit it. All right, and now we're gonna go through and repeat the process of cleanup. So super easy, we're just gonna go through, scrape everything back in our container. As you guys can see, immediately saving a lot of ink here. Those are big globs. So yeah, super important if you get one of these little rubber spatulas or just even um, popsicle sticks, make sure you guys are saving your ink because this stuff is expensive and you can reuse it. It's still good after you've done a couple prints with it. So that's another shirt finished. I'm pretty happy with this one. I tried to line up the front the best I could and it's still a little bit off, so I still got a little bit of learning to go. But I've come pretty far, pretty happy with it. Um, that's the back for you guys. And that's the front. So let me know what you're thinking of this concept. Thank you guys for tuning in this is into this video and catch you in the next one. So this is a little side clip for the video after we've already ended it, but I just wanted to summarize this video with letting you guys know great things don't happen without great failures. I haven't made a shirt I'm 100% happy with yet. I've ruined lots of my personal clothing, not necessarily ruined, just cool little prototypes, learning lessons. Um, each one of these shirts I'm producing right now is me learning how to produce these clothing, use the screens, work with the inks, um, cleaning the screens. This is all one really big learning process. After doing this video and making this shirt and messing up this placement, I realized immediately after I did that last clip where I went wrong thinking about it, I was like, oh, what can I do with this shirt now? Where did it go wrong? Where it went wrong was you saw me taping up the screen and my placement for the screen. The wording on this image isn't aligned with how the screen is. I went off of my whole image and the heads centering. There's two parts to this image and I erased the head for the text here. Um, so the centering changed when I went from doing the whole image to just doing the text. And since I went off my alignment measurement for the whole image, when I did just the text, now it's a little off. And that was a learning lesson, had to ruin the shirt, had to make the mistake to learn what I need to look out for to do properly. Um, so yeah, if you guys can take anything away from my little series here of all my mistakes is mistakes happen, it's completely okay. Try and look at it as a learning les lesson and where you went wrong, try and backtrack in your process, go a little bit slower, uh, tweak your system on how you're doing things and see what you can do to possibly have a different result. The very first time I tried to make my screen, I had a lot of issues as you guys may have saw in my earlier videos with that. Burning the screen and even getting the screen to where you could burn it was a whole day learning lesson for me and I messed it up a couple times too. Um, so I'm still learning a lot here, but it's a really fun process. I'm really enjoying it. So we got another little banger of a shirt out, prototype six or seven, I think now. Um, so again, thank you guys for tuning into this video. If you're new here, my name's Kalen. This is my little video log diary of my life and just all the random stuff I'm doing. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end here, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Uh, I got a lot of videos 
planned and in the works and I try and post once every week. So thanks for tuning in.